It's summertime for everyone. Well, everyone that lives above this line. And let's be honest, it's not exactly cold for you, is it? Ever. So now is the best time for some PlayStation games that give you that summer holiday vibe. Tall palm trees, crystal clear seas, and Chinese guys selling obviously fake watches on the beach. So here's five PlayStation games to get you there. Dave the Diver is a fantastic game and one that I recently just scored the Platinum Trophy on so I'm pretty qualified to talk about this one. You start off by simply diving down into the water and just catching fish. Just this though is enough to pull you into the game straight away. Hey, the game controls are responsive, catching the fish with your weapons is enjoyable and the graphics have great style to them. You assume the game is just going to be about making your guy stronger and catching ever increasingly larger fish and then BAM! It hits you with the sushi restaurant simulator. So you're catching fish by day and then using them in your sushi restaurant at night. You can hire staff and catch more impressive fish to earn more sushi money and then you think you have the game figured out. You're going deeper and deeper to catch better fish to make sushi from and then BAM! BAM! Undiscovered sea people Muriel in a cave. But to find out more you'll need to dive even deeper into the sea and you'll need really good gear which requires a lot of money and just when you thought you knew where you stood with this game BAM! 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 Farm management, Pokemon collecting, boss creatures, mini games, fish management. All this as well as a sprawling storyline soon changes what you thought was going to be a 10 hour indie title into a 60 hour fish based epic. This is a digital title that you can get for the PS4 and PS5 although I read online that if you play on anything other than a PS5 your load times can be pretty long. But maybe you want your tropical game to have faster paced action. If so, then let me turn your attention towards MotorStorm Pacific Rift. This PlayStation 3 game is a sequel to the incredible MotorStorm, but where that title had you mudsliding like a junkie at Glastonbury, now you're ploughing through the bush like an adult film star in the 70s. If you haven't played this game, what have you been doing? You take to multiple tropical locations in buggies, bikes, cars, mud pluggers, which are somehow different to 4x4s, lorries and even monster trucks as clearly displayed on the game's cover. You normally have different types of vehicles in each race, which keeps things interesting. Bikes are quick and nimble, but will turn into sandwich filling if hit by a truck. Each different machine is equipped with a nitro boost and crashes are frequent and spectacular. The ground gets ripped up as you speed over it, various trackside objects can be destroyed and you can even take different paths around each track. The courses look great, they play great and you have an absolute banger of a soundtrack to race along to. This package is still so much fun and I recommend you play this game. Now you can get this up and running with higher frame rates and better resolution using modern PC emulation. But from the YouTube videos I've seen, the nitro screen shaking effect looks hideous. So maybe it was something that was coded to only look right at the original 30 frames per second of the original game. The next game is also one that's been rejigged around a little bit, but is utterly flawless. This is Boku no Nasuyasumi 2 on the PlayStation 2, and the rejigging here is that this is an English translation of a Japanese only game. The fantastic Hilltop Works is responsible for the English patch, and you can get that through his ex social media feed, or if you look hard enough around the internet, you can find pre patched ISO files ready to go. I'm sure many of you would have already seen the groundbreaking 6 hour action button review of Boku no Nasuyasumi on the PS1 so you know why this game is an absolute must play during the summer holiday season. But for those of you unfamiliar with Boku and Chill, let me show you why you need this game. 
Although there is a vast story to be found here and a video game which is a lot of fun, what you really have here is a 1975 Japanese summer holiday experience. You have no waypoint markers, no quest log, no direct structure telling you what to do and when to do it so you can experience as much or as little of this game as you see fit. You play as a young boy named Boku who is sent to his aunt and uncle's house for the summer month of August 1975. The house is located in a very small village on the Japanese coast and that is basically where the video game starts. You have the whole month to do as you please at whatever pace. Each day starts with the same family breakfast and from there you can poke around the house, go out on your bike, explore the surrounding area, collect bugs, make those bugs fight each other, go swimming, or talk to the relatively few residents in the area. There are many things to actually do and goals to achieve here, but I don't really want to start listing them off, as a lot of the fun of this game is the discovery aspect of the experience. But we'll give you a brief example and then a couple of game pointers. So one morning over breakfast, your uncle will mention that he saw a homemade rocket going off on the other side of the bay but then disappeared. Later, by walking around, you might come across an area that would be perfect for amateur rocket launching. So, you decide to have a swim around in the water in that area and you come across used rocket parts in the water which will come in handy later. The game only gives you the dialogue at the breakfast table. The rest is up to you to work out and piece together. That is most of the plot elements in Boku no Naisu 2. The game will offer you a passing morsel of information and you have to take it and just run with it. The only tips I'll give you is collecting the dinosaur bottle caps will increase how much time you can spend underwater and being able to dive deep down will help you uncover all sorts of things. The other tip is to get on top of your bug wrestling game early as winning the different size categories will unlock more paths. If you're looking for something that's really different and super chilled, this is absolutely the game for you. Although I do think everyone should try this as it's a huge piece of PlayStation history that doesn't get enough love in the West. All we got was this PSN avatar. <laughs> Dead Island though, that's pretty good. Well, it is on the PS4 because it actually runs decently. The PS3 version is utter dog. And considering the PS4 definitive version is on PlayStation Plus now, that's the version to play. Or is it? PlayStation Plus offers the definitive edition and it also offers the Riptide definitive edition. You can't tell me there's more than one definitive version, otherwise it's clearly not the definitive version. Outside of that touch of stupidity, this is actually quite a fun open world zombie game. You go around, collect all sorts of different stuff to use as weapons, pummel a load of undead into the ground, all while exploring a nice tropical island. There are quests to do and a story to follow, but the main gameplay loop of accept mission, start traveling, loot stuff, modern craft weapons and items, explore and kicking zombies in the head is straightforward enough to be easily enjoyable, but deep enough not to be a shallow, mindless experience. There are many different ways you can attempt the missions, but just the game world as a whole is a nice place to be, even if it does have hordes of the undead lurking around. I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would, considering how bored I am of open world games these days. And for a grand total of zero pounds, if you're a PlayStation Plus member, just give it a go. You might really like it. But now, the fifth and final game on this list is this PlayStation 2 game. Translated, it basically means Toro on holiday, and it stars the official PlayStation mascot character, Toro Honore. And of all the games on today, this is probably the title that is the least game-like and a more experienced sort of title. Well, if you only speak English, that is, and don't feel like holding up your phone the whole time with Google Translate running. But if you could read Japanese, you'd find that you play as Toro the Cat, which is the only character Sony has ever given PlayStation mascot status to. Anyway, Toro's gone on holiday and is exploring his new surroundings. He will ask you questions about what he finds and you have to input 
what they are and what they are for. And then later, Toro will make conversation with you using the new things you have taught him. He will run into his friends and talk to them too. He will even tell them about the new things he has learned. But this all only works if you can understand Japanese text, because otherwise, this just becomes a sightseeing tour of Japanese town that keeps getting interrupted by the cat from PlayStation All-Stars. Each screen is actually an FM video and not just a static image. Plus, the game actually has a day and night cycle. As well as a vacation simulator, it's also a look back at the sort of games Sony just doesn't publish anymore. Back almost 25 years ago when the PlayStation brand was far more experimental. Although I guess you could argue that these days, thanks to digital publishing, indie studios filled the gap of the offbeat and unusual games, allowing Sony to put all their resources into their blockbuster titles. So yeah, how much Japanese you can understand is really gonna impact what you get out of this title, but there is something for everyone at the end of it. Anyway, that's it, bye. いいね。ボタンを押し、友達に勧めてから、ドジキュラブを購読してください。